Okay, so now that we know what a sound box is, and, and Elkonin boxes, I'm sure you've heard that phrase before. Anytime you hear sound boxes or Elkonin boxes, I want you to make the connection that this is a phonemic awareness skill involving phoneme segmentation. Can you remember that? So anytime you see these boxes, anytime you see that, it's involving some type of phoneme segmentation skill, or you have a case study involving Elkonin boxes, it's involving phoneme segmentation where the child is, is given a word in spoken language or they're given a picture um, and they're asked to segment the sounds. A lot of times you have those, uh, a lot of times you'll have like a little peg or circle where you'll use that and you're just, you're not even, you're just saying, you know, I hear one sound, another sound, I hear three sounds in the word. So it's, it's and sometimes you could be like, I hear the K sound, the A sound, the T sound, okay? You're not writing it out. You don't have to be writing it out for this pure phoneme segmentation, okay? All right, now, now let's look at another one here, uh, phoneme segmentation, and this is going to work into a question. But, but here we have sound boxes, and here we actually have the words. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, imagine uh, uh, I'm going to I'm going to say the words out loud. So imagine that these were being spoken out loud by the teacher. And, and your challenge, we're going to do this together, is to identify how many sounds you hear in the word. And we'll start with the, uh, we'll start with uh, the last one. No, no, we'll start with the first one. Through. Okay, how many sounds, how many phone needs you hear in the word through? Well, you hear a th, ru. Two sounds, right? Th, ru. That's got through. Th, ru. Two sounds. How about best? How many sounds do you hear in best? Let's see. I'm hearing a b, e, s, t. That's got four sounds, four phonemes. How about fresh? What do we got here? We have another f, r, e, sh. Okay. So I'll do it under here. This is b, e, s, t. Fresh is f, r, e, sh. Four. What about scratch? Scratch. Scratch is s, k, r, a, ch, five. Now, when we look at these ones right here, these words, okay, which one would be the most linguistically complex? Now, I'm not talking about which one is, you know, structurally uh, the hardest and, and, and has the most advanced uh, phonics rule. Um, I'm asking for the one that has the most sounds in it. The one that would be the hardest to pronounce. Well, that would be this one right here. Scratch, right? Because think about it. How many sounds does that make? It has a s, k, r, a, ch. Five sounds. So this one would be the hardest one for a student that's, that's working with these words to pronounce because it has five distinct phonemes. Now notice, I'm just talking about sounds. I'm not getting into anything to do with phonics. So if we were going to do phonics for this one right here, we'd be like, okay, uh, this is a blend. This is a blend. This is a constant diagram. This is a constant cluster, right? This is a uh, this is a trigraph here. We'll, we'll talk about those later. But we're we're not doing that. We're just sticking with sounds. All right. Uh, and which would be the easiest one? If scratch is the hardest because it has five distinct sounds. It's got the, the s, k, r, a, ch, five sounds, which would be the technically the easiest word to say, through. I'm not saying it's the easiest word to decode because that would involve letter sound correspondence and, and learning phonics patterns and phonics rules. No, I'm just talking about an easier word to say. Words with two phonemes are a lot easier to say than words with five phonemes, okay? Um, sound boxes and Elkona boxes are really helpful uh, when you do add in the print, when you do add in letters, because what this becomes is when you add in, when you do a sound box activity and you include the spelling of a word, then you get to practice letter sound correspondence. And this is really helpful for a student that may be decoding and not pronouncing all the sounds in a word. So I'll take a word like scratch. Student comes and they're decoding that word. And let's say uh, they decode that word scratch and, and they omit the R. 
Okay, they, they just omit it. Now, maybe it's because they need more practice with, with words with a constant cluster, right? So if you wanted to help a student that's having difficulty with blends and clusters and not hitting all the sounds in a word when they pronounce it, then doing an activity where you, where you link uh, letters with sounds and, and use sound boxes, well, then this becomes when you link these two together, writing and sounds and letters, you link sound and, and you include uh, that into an activity like this, then it becomes a really helpful activity for uh, to help a student with phonics and letter sound correspondence, because then they could be doing an activity where they, they say the word scratch, they isolate all the sounds from the word scratch, scratch, and then they practice spelling it out. I hear us. Ruh-ah-ch. Okay, and, and in that way there, right, then it becomes a really powerful phonics letter sound correspondence activity. Okay, so sound boxes could be used for pure phonemic awareness and phoneme isolation. And if we add in print, we add in that the, the matching up letters with sounds, then it can become a really helpful corrective tool for um, letter sound correspondence, because what it's doing is it's explicitly helping a student match up sounds with their spelling patterns. And this it reinforces itself, matching up sounds with letters, that's called uh, decoding, and letters with sound, that's called encoding. We know that those two things reinforce each other, okay? All right, so right now we're gonna do a bunch of problems and we're gonna, we're gonna start with just working on sound box problems. So we're just gonna be a, phoneme segmentation activities. And uh, uh, so, we'll, so we'll, we'll get going and we'll do our first problem. Let's start. 